Welcome. Today we're going to talk about readability statistics and how to determine a document's readability and what that rating means. So for readability formulas, they have been around for several decades and the goal is to provide a rating for how easy or how difficult a document is to read and comprehend. Several formulas have been created. Uh, some are used more frequently than others, but they essentially measure the complexity of vocabulary and syntax, some of which can be automated and incorporated into Microsoft Word, for example, and some of which need to be manual because they have some human component that cannot yet be automated by computers. Common measurements focus on word length, both by letter and or syllable, they also look at sentence length and sometimes word frequency. And two of the common formulas are the Flesch formula and the Flesch Kincaid grade level formula. I'm going to look at the Flesch formula first. This is one of the more popular ones. And you are looking at a formula that will give you a number between 100 and 0. And 100 means it's the easiest to read and 0 would be the most difficult to read. In that ranking. And so basically you have a number minus a number times the average sentence length minus a number times the average word length and syllables and completing that formula gives you the score. And if you have 100 to 90 that is something that's very easy to read easily understood by an 11 year old such as the book Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. A score between 90 and 80 is easy to read an example of conversational English, and an example would be most of the books in the Harry Potter series. A score of 80 to 70 is fairly easy to read, and an example would be the book The Call of the Wild. 70 to 60 is what we consider plain English, and it is easily understood by the average 15 year old. And if you are targeting a general audience, this is the level that you would want to be at to make sure that you're hitting at least 50% of your readers that they can comprehend what you're writing. And an example would be the book Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus. A score of 60 to 50 is fairly difficult to read, such as articles from Time magazine. 50 to 30 is considered difficult to read, and the example is A Brief History of Time, which is a physics book. A score of 30 to 10 is very difficult to read, and you would be a subject matter expert in that area to fully comprehend what you're reading. And an example would be the Harvard Law Review. And a score of 10 to 0 means that it's an extremely difficult document to read. Again, you're a subject matter expert. And examples would be like an academic journal article titled The Quantitative Qualitative Distinction and the Null Hypothesis Significance Testing Procedure, which just the title seems more complex than all the rest. And another example is the Flush Kincaid grade level formula, which was designed by the U.S. Navy to determine the grade level of education required to understand the text. And so it basically took the Flush formula and tweaked it a little bit and then gave an equivalent grade level that would be needed to comprehend the text. So the equivalent grade level is now listed here, and you can see what the expectation is for the examples used. So Harry Potter series, uh, most of those books would be around the sixth grade reading level. Time Magazine would be 10 to 12th grade. A Brief History of Time would be a college student, Harvard Law Review would be a college graduate, and professional, meaning a postgraduate and a subject matter expert for something like an academic journal article. And I have a couple examples so you can see the difference here. So a score of 100 to 90 or a fifth grade example from Alice's Adventures in Wonderland Alice was beginning to get very tired of sitting by her sister on the bank and of having nothing to do. Once or twice she had peeped into her book her sister was reading, but it had no pictures or conversations in it. And what is the use of a book, thought Alice, without pictures or conversations? So she was considering in her own mind, as well as she could, 
for the hot day made her feel very sleepy and stupid. Whether the pleasure of making a daisy chain would be worth the trouble of getting up and picking the daisies when suddenly a white rabbit with pink eyes ran close by her. And so this is an example where you would want a fifth grade reading comprehension to fully understand the information being covered in the excerpt. Here's an example of 70 to 60 or an eighth to ninth grade example. And this is from Frankenstein or the Modern Prometheus and it's in the form of a letter to Mrs. Saville, England, July 7, 1917. My dear sister, I write a few lines in haste to say that I am safe and well advanced on my voyage. This letter will reach England by a merchant now on its homeward voyage from Archangel, more fortunate than I, who may not see my native land perhaps for many years. I am, however, in good spirits. My men are bold and apparently firm of purpose, nor do the floating sheets of ice that continually pass us, indicating the dangers of the region towards which we are advancing, appear to dismay them. And an example of a 10 through 0 rating or the professional example, this is from the academic journal article that was published in the Journal of Philosophy of Education. Rigidity that does not admit that it may well be more reasonable to suppose it is the data that are anomalous or limited, but requires an instant rejection of the null hypothesis upon obtaining statistical significance, together with the view that science progresses through accumulating publicly verifiable empirical facts and through mechanical procedures and experiments, which anybody can repeat at will, are of course the characteristics of a kind of positivism which disavows the intuitions and judgments of a researcher. And this is characteristic of the practice of the null hypothesis significance testing procedure. Thankfully, physicists in the early 1900s were not bothered with the need for rigor of this sort, or Einstein's theory of relativity might never have caught on. As Roseboom has noted with references to the NHSTP, research does not progress through decision precipitating rules, but through inferential judgments by which we appropriately adjust our beliefs and opinions. It is quite absurd to make an epistemic claim to a general proposition on the basis of a single experiment. Now, if you didn't understand that, that is quite okay. This is at the postgraduate professional level, and to fully understand what they're talking about, you would have an operational understanding of quantitative research, and statistics. To look at the scoring, how you see this show up in different documents, uh, looking at the flesh score, the equivalent grade level, and then this is how many words per sentence you see on average and how many syllables per word you see on average. So for a fifth grade reading level, it is eight or fewer words per sentence and 1.23 or fewer syllables per word. For sixth grade it's 11 words per sentence or 1.31 syllables. For eighth to ninth grade it's 17 words per sentence, 1.47 syllables per word. College student is 25 words per sentence or 1.67 syllables per word. Professional is greater than 29 words per sentence and equal to or greater than 1.92 syllables per word. So what you can take away from this is the higher up you go from fifth grade to postgraduate, the more words you have per sentence and the on average and the more syllables you have per word on average. And you can find this information in Microsoft Word. So if you are writing your own essay or document or you are able to convert someone else's information into a Word document, you can turn on readability statistics. It's a feature that's normally not on, but you can turn it on. I'll show you how to do it in a second here and get the automatic scoring for the flesh reading ease and flesh Kincaid grade level. So for example, I was looking at a document and you can see over here 
that after the spell check was run, it gave the readability, and it said the flush reading ease was 42.4, and the grade level was 10th grade, 0.8, so almost 11th grade. And then there are some other ratings to be aware of. Also in the readability statistics here, you have sentences per paragraph and words per sentence. And you can see the difference between technical and academic writing here. So for technical writing that happens in the workplace, you see an average of 15 words per sentence. And academic writing that looks typically more like essay writing, you'll have an average of 25 words per sentence. So almost double for the academic length. And then for sentences uh, per paragraph, for technical writing, the average is one to three sentences per paragraph, so very short. And for academic writing, the average is seven sentences per paragraph. So again, more than double for academic writing. And then there's also an accessibility check that you can use, particularly if you're writing a technical document or including a document that has tables, charts, graphs, anything like that, to make sure that it is accessible to all readers, and I will show you that as well. So if you open up a Word document and either already it contains wording or you copy and paste wording in or you type up a document, um, what you're going to do is go to File and then go to Options. And under these word options, you'll have actually a bunch of different things that you can tweak, but we're going to look at proofing here. So if you go to proofing, there are these general settings that most Microsoft programs use. And one of those that is unchecked usually is the readability statistics. So you can click here to turn on the readability statistics and then click OK. And then all you have to do is run a spell check, which I will do here. Note that at least one thing has to be spelled incorrectly, so you can introduce a spelling error to get this to work. And then once you're done, click OK, and up will pop your readability statistics. So that's where it has, among other things, uh, words, paragraph sentences, uh, sentences per paragraph, words per sentence characters per word if you're interested in that. And then also the readability statistics at the very bottom. So this document, which is a uh, workplace document, has a flush reading ease uh, number of 28.6 and a flush Kincaid grade level of 12.9. So 12th grade 0.9, so almost to college level here. And another thing to look at to be aware of the passive sentences, we have 7.1% here. And the lower the percentage, the better. Typically, when you're writing, except for a couple of fields like medicine and the hard sciences, where writing in passive voice is preferred, in which case it doesn't matter there. But every other type of writing, pretty much, you're looking for the lowest number of passive sentences. Uh, percentage of passive sentences possible. And then you can click OK and it goes back to your document. You can also check the accessibility. It's under review. Check accessibility. Click on it and it will tell you if there are ways you can make your document more accessible to people. Uh, so particularly if they have a screen reader or something like that. So here we have a chart that doesn't have alternative text that would help explain what it is on a screen reader. We have a cell, a table cell with merged or split cells, which would be harder for a screen reader to read. And then hard to read text contrast would be some phrases here where it's just hard to see what these letters are. Uh, so consider using different options. And that, uh, that would be what I would recommend to take a peek at, whether you're writing a workplace document or an essay, so that you can check those readability statistics, and particularly for technical documents to check the accessibility of the document as well.